discouraging circumstances. Yeah, I, well, I made, I've made a lot of mistakes. The biggest mistake, in, uh, well, not the biggest, necessarily the biggest, but, but buying Berkshire Hathaway itself was a mistake because Berkshire was a lousy textile business. And I bought it very cheap. I'd been taught by Ben Graham to buy things on a quantitative basis, look around for things that are cheap. And that, I was taught that, we'll say, in 1949 or 50. It made a big impression on me. So I went around looking for what I call used cigar butts of stocks. And the cigar butt approach to buying stocks is that you walk down the street and you're looking around for cigar butts and you find this, on the street, this terrible looking, soggy, ugly looking cigar, one puff left in it. But you pick it up and you get your one puff. It's disgusting, you throw it away, but it's free. I mean, it's cheap. And then you look around for another soggy, you know, one puff <laughs> cigarette. Well, that's what I did for years. It's a mistake. Uh, although you can make money doing it, but you can't make it with big money. It's so much easier just to, to buy wonderful businesses. So now I would rather buy a wonderful business at a fair price than a fair business at a wonderful price. But in those days, I was buying cheap stocks. And Berkshire was selling below its working capital per share. You got the plants for nothing. You got the machinery for nothing. You got the inventory and receivables at a discount. It was cheap. So I bought it. And 20 years later, I was still running a lousy business. And that money did not compound. You really want to be in a wonderful business because the time is the friend of the wonderful business. You keep compounding. It keeps doing more business. And you keep making more money. Time is the enemy of the lousy business. I could have sold Berkshire, perhaps liquidated it, and made a quick little profit, you know, one puff. But staying with those kind of businesses is, 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 is a big mistake. So you might say I learned something out of that mistake. And I would have been way better off taking what I did with Berkshire is I kept buying better businesses. I started the insurance business, C's Candy, the Buffalo, all, all kinds of things. I would have been way better doing that with a, with a brand new little entity that I'd set up rather than using Berkshire as the platform. Now I've had a lot of fun out of it. I mean, everything in life seems to turn out for the better. So I, I, I don't have any complaints about that, but it was a dumb thing to do. I went into US Air. I bought a preferred stock in 1989. Uh, as soon as my check cleared, the company went into the red and never got out. I mean, it was a, a really dumb. I mean, it, it, uh, I've got an 800 number I call now whenever I think about buying an air, airline stock. I call them up any hour that fortunately I can call them at 3 in the morning and I just dial and I say, my name's Warren, I'm an aeroholic, you know, and I'm thinking about buying this thing. And then they talk me down. I mean, it takes, it takes, it takes hours sometimes, but it's worth it, believe me. Uh, if you ever think about that airline, uh, buying an airline stock, call me and I'll give you the 800 number because you, know, you don't want to do it. Uh, but we got lucky in terms of how we eventually came out on it. But it was a dumb, dumb decision, all mine. Uh, and I've done, biggest, biggest, uh, in terms of, event, uh, in terms of opportunity costs, eventual costs, uh, I bought half interest in a Sinclair filling station when I was about 20 with a guy I was in the National Guard with. And I had about $10,000 then, and I put $2,000 in, and I lost it all. So that was 20%, and that means that the opportunity cost is now $6 billion of that of that uh, filling station, which is a big price to pay for, you know, getting to wipe a few windows and a few <laughs> windshields and things like that. So, actually, I like it when Berkshire goes down because it reduced the cost of that mistake uh, on an opportunity <laughs> cost. Uh, but the biggest mistakes we've made by far, I've made, not we've made, biggest mistakes I've made by far are mistakes of omission and not commission. I mean, it's the things I knew enough to do they were within my circle of competence, and I was sucking my thumb. And that is really, those are the ones that hurt. They don't show up anyplace. I probably cost Berkshire at least $5 billion, for example, by sucking my thumb 20 years ago, or close to it, when Fannie Mae was, was having some troubles. And we could have bought the whole company for practically nothing. And I don't worry about that if it's Microsoft because I don't know it. Because Microsoft isn't in my circle of competence. And so I, 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 I don't have any reason to think I'm entitled to make money out of Microsoft or out of cocoa beans or whatever. But I did know enough to understand Fannie Mae and I blew it. And that never shows up under conventional accounting. But the co I know the cost of it. I know, I know you know, I, I passed it up. And those are the big, big mistakes. And uh, I've had plenty of them. At, uh, and you'll, unless I tell you about them in the annual report, 
and I resist the temptation sometimes. Uh, and as I tell you about them in the annual report, you're not going to know it because it doesn't show up under conventional accounting. But omission is way bigger than commission. There is big opportunities in life have to be seized. Uh, we don't do very many things, but when we get the chance to do something that's right and big, we've got to do it. And even to, to do it in a small scale is just as big a mistake almost as not doing it at all. I mean, you've really got to, you got to grab them when they come. Because they, you're not going to get 500 great opportunities. You would be better off if when you got out of school here, you got a punch card with 20 punches on it. And every big financial, every financial decision you made, you used up a punch. You'd get very rich because you'd think through very hard each one. I mean, you went to a cocktail party and somebody talked about a company you didn't even understand what they did or couldn't pronounce the name, but they made some money last week and another one like it. You wouldn't buy it if you only had 20 punches on that card. There's a temptation to dabble, if, uh, particularly during bull markets. Uh, uh, in stocks, it's so easy. You know, it's easier now than ever because you can do it online. You know, just you click it in and maybe it goes up a point and you get excited about that and you buy another one the next day and so on. You can't make any money over time doing that. But if you had a punch card with only 20 punches, you weren't going to get another one in the rest of your life, you would think a long time before every investment decision. And you would make good ones and you'd make big ones. And you probably wouldn't even use all 20 punches at, uh, in your lifetime, but you wouldn't need to.